Good morning, good morning everybody. This is Emma here, it's good to see you. I have a simple question, which is the title. So what happens when the excitement wears off? What do you do when it's no longer new? Do you abandon it? Do you throw the baby with the wash water? Or do you find some grits and do you manage to soldier on? So my title, as my title says, is self-revealing. What happens after the initial, let me share this to a couple of pages and let's have a conversation. I will keep this brief. I will go straight to the point. I will not waste your time and mine beating about the bush. As the title suggests, it's a straightforward, direct discussion. What happens when the excitement wears off determines the outcome because it does because it does hi 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 i've seen somebody's joined us thank you for joining please share the broadcast invite other people to join us and let's get straight into this we all start new things and we all do new exciting things all the time whilst it is still new whilst the novelty still arrives that's not the problem that's not the issue the problem becomes when you've tried it for a while, when you get to mid-cycle, when the excitement is no longer there because it's no longer new. That is where your outcomes are determined. So let me give you an example. I'm sat here. It's 10 past midday where I am. Really. At this point, the weather is a bit cooler than typical. And what I wanted to eat was warm food, maybe go to the canteen. But I do know that if I go to the canteen, I will see rice. I will see pizzas. I will see a lot of things. But in here, in my lunchbox, is my loaded smoothie. Fully loaded smoothie. It is cold. It's not exciting. When I first started my weight loss journey, it was really a novelty act. And because I was doing something new, and I was trying something else. It was fun to do. It was very exciting to go. And I drank my smoothies with gusto because it's new. Very exciting. Uh, very exciting. It's the honeymoon phase for me on that project. At the moment, we get into a point where this sister here has been drinking these for 68 weeks now. I know the taste of these things. I know exactly how this feels. My tongue is craving something new, something warm, something. And what happens in this time will determine whether my journey totally works or not. Whether I return to old ways or not will be determined right here in this season when it is no longer exciting. Whether you have the discipline to carry on going or you lose focus and you lose track and you return to the old ways or you abandon project is determined at this phase. So when you start anything new, remember that even if this phase hasn't come calling, that it will come. That you will hit the point where you think, oh, I've been doing this for a while. Let me slide it for just this once. Please say, good morning. No, don't slide it for just this once. You know the right thing to do. You keep doing the right thing, even when it's not exciting. Even when it is not attractive, you will keep loving the same woman you are committed to even when she is not the youngest. You keep soldiering on on your career even when it's not exciting. You hang on to your teenage children even when the novelty act wears off. When you first have a baby, it's very exciting. You are now a mommy or you are a daddy and it's exciting but the honeymoon phase actually comes to an end regardless of what the venture is and the difference between the people who stick and the people who abandon ship is what i am actually sharing with you today those who understand that anything new will stop being new at some point Robert, good morning those who understand that the novelty will wear off at some point those who expect that the woman remains the same woman even as she ages. 
yes you do see new contours you see gray hair and you see the but the personality remains the commitment should remain because you understand this this is the key difference between those who remain married and those who lose focus in the middle of it people get married they're very excited give to good morning they are in love with this woman they can't breathe without this woman it's amazing and then they live with this woman and the novelty wears off because you wake up with her you go to sleep with her you see her with her clothes on and off and you see her every day repeatedly and those who don't understand what i'm describing are the ones who will tell you but i'm bored but i'm bored good morning good morning gifty but i'm bored i've been married to the same woman 15 years well congratulations she's been married to you 15 years as well the difference between the mourner and the one who's not mourning is that one of you probably understands what commitment and longevity means one of you understands that it's not always going to be exciting that it's not always going to be new but it's discovering different layers in the old which makes it just as exciting as you go the people who understand this they find ways in which to sustain an interest they find ways in which to maintain a commitment to a project they are less likely to abandon ship in the middle of a project people who have this knowledge and understanding they stick at things and because they stick at things they see things through the natural phase they are likely to be the achievers they are the likely ones who would be at the end doing what they said they were going to do having done that and got the t-shirt to show for it so this morning i am choosing to drink this smoothie but this is not the most attractive thing on the menu today and i'm a good morning this morning i have to find in my reserve the reasons why i started drinking this smoothie this morning i need to work out that yes it is cold yes it is all those reasons why i should go have a warm uh, food to eat but no I am sticking to this one because it's a winning formula. DJ I'm of a good morning. And I'm a good morning. I am sticking to this because I understand that after two weeks, after three weeks, four weeks, it becomes more of the same. But more of the same goodness is not a bad thing. More of the same wonderfulness is not necessarily a bad thing. I am committed to trying this. I want to do this and I know it's good for me. So I have to remind myself of the reasons why I started in the first place. You don't abandon ship because the novelty wears off. Nanaya, good morning. You don't throw your kids out because you are bored. Some decisions are permanent. Some decisions require commitment. You loved them when they were six months old. Well, I'm sorry. They are 19 now. 16, 14, 13, the terrible 11s. Still your kid. No, you don't get to throw that kid out because it's no longer attractive. Because now the child has become lippy. You want to return it? Return it to whom? Darling, that decision is made. Your bed is made. And you are going to have to get ready to lie in it. Good morning. Good, good morning, Nanaya. I am having this discussion and I'm giving you practical examples because people tend to run the first time they hit this snag on any journey. They meet a lovely young lady. They sing praises about this lady. They marry this lady. Amongst a lot of razzmatazz, they cannot live without this lady. After two years, three years of this woman, this same man is now complaining. He cannot see anything positive about this woman. He wants to complain and mourn and go try his luck with the next woman. If you are that kind of person, I guarantee you. That relationship will not last either because even then the novelty will wear off again. Everything that has a beginning goes through that process. You have to understand that. Everything is only new for a certain period of time and everything will no longer be new. The novelty wears off and it's a fact of life. It's, a, it's something we all have to address and deal with. The difference between those who know this and those who falter is this simple fact. When you know that the novelty will wear off, there is absolutely no surprise when it does. No, there's nothing wrong with your relationship. You are used to her. No, she might not be the youngest, but neither are you. 
No, you've known her so many years, but each time you discover something new, you look for something new, you create something new, you find ways of exciting yourself, even with the old. You adjust yourself to the realities of why you decided to go down that route in the first place. And you will need to reflect and ask yourself, Amma, what is the best thing to do for me this morning? And for me, the best thing to do this morning is to continue this shake, is to drink this goodness. Because I know it is fully loaded and it contains everything I need. And then I look at my neck and I'm like, oh, I can see results. Come on, girl. Keep going. Keep going. But I have had to find that result this morning. I've had to dig in. I've had to evaluate. I've had to discover reasons why you do not throw in the old. In search, in pursuit of the new all the time. I know many people who've never really achieved anything in this life. Simply because they've never understood this. They always start something new. And every single new thing they start always loses the novelty feeling because everything goes through that stage because they don't understand this is the norm of life when this novelty is broken when it's taken away they feel there is no value left they no longer see why they commenced on the journey and it's easy easy to abandon it's easy to change directions it's easy to complain and say that it doesn't work but it's not that it doesn't work it's because you've not seen it through it's because you've not allowed the process to come to an end. So I am asking, what has lost the novelty in your life? Are you beginning to wonder if something is exactly what it was at the start? It probably isn't. It's mature. Mature wine doesn't smell wonderful. Those who drink it claim it tastes nice. But the smell, as it matures after fermentation, definitely different. From when it was grape juice do you throw it out or do you allow a process to come to the end that is the question so it's not the beginning of a project which determines its outcome the gusto with which you start new things does not really determine much those things are your responses to the excitement of the honeymoon phase it doesn't necessarily mean that you will have longevity what happens when you hit the snag what happens when it's not exciting? What happens when the novelty wears off is what would determine your final outcome. If you choose to stick, you will see the outcome of longevity. If you abandon ship, you will discover that you haven't achieved what you set out to be. It is a simple knowledge that I wish was more common in our community, that more people understood this because we see the lack of this understanding in all manner of places in all sorts of times you see it in parent children interactions where parents are looking to abandon kids and somebody was saying to me recently oh, i want the social system to take the kids from me no you don't get to have that decision love the day you committed to have those kids it was a long-term decision my dear no you don't return them because you're bored no you do not give them to anybody else because they've challenged you no, you do not run. You do not run like a coward because things have not gone the way you wanted. Well, sorry. Life doesn't come with a plan. Life does not obey any rules. But there are some things that are common. Bread and butter stuff. Everything that has a beginning goes through an episode of change. And anything that has existed for a while is no longer new. And things that are no longer new are not very exciting. They might be what is needed. They might be what will get you there. But it's no longer exciting. The excitement wears off. If you learn not to be a thrill seeker, if you learn not to just focus on excitement, if you learn to look at things of value beyond the excitement, then you are somebody who will have longevity. You are somebody who would be able to stick at things. You might be somebody who can see things through and you'll be somebody who will observe results. You will observe results. And Patrick, good morning. It's very true. Nothing is new forever. Everything wears off. And you see that I keep referencing, anytime you see me referencing a particular event, you know that something's happened. So I've had a conversation with a brother and he says, 
this kid, the girl was so exciting. I'm like, I know, I know her. She's still as exciting. No, but she's changed. No, she hasn't changed. You've just got used to her. I've known her as long as you've known her, but I don't live with her. I see her occasionally. And because I see her occasionally, every time I see her, she is still the same bubbly character. She's lovely. She's wonderful. She's beautiful. Yeah, she's aging, but she's aging more gracefully than the rest of us. And he's like, oh, I hadn't thought about it that way. I hadn't thought about it that way. Mark, good morning, good morning. I hadn't thought about it that way. If you look at her in comparison to the average, as much as she's aging like the rest of us, she is more graceful in aging. And he was like, you know, talking to you is wonderful because you know how to put things in perspective for me. I was beginning to wonder, I was beginning to think, but when you say so, I actually do realize your wife still tears everybody's head. All the other men cannot wait for you to be that stupid to let her go. And if you make the mistake, I suspect you will, she will leave you. She will not take this nonsense. She's not that kind of girl. She will not tolerate this rubbish. And he says, you know her very well. I'm like, of course, I've known her for a long, long, long time. She will leave you. And when she leaves you, it will not be six months. Other people, wiser men, smarter men, will realize the value of this woman you've let go. People who have more mental tenacity will go for her. They will worship the ground on which she walks, the very ground you used to worship. People who are experienced and understand more than you currently seem to understand will be there. And they will find exciting things. I'm a woman, I'm not even that inclined, but I can tell you, your wife is very exciting. Your wife is beautiful, exceptionally well-constructed. My personality is bubbly, but it does not compare to this girl. She is one of the people I see, I'm like, wow, how did the Lord make you so incredible? And you live with this woman and you are now looking to turn an eye elsewhere, really? And he's like, uh, and you think there's anybody else who would be this exciting and will remain just as exciting as you live with them? And he's like, uh, mm, mm. So this morning, I've managed to help a brother reconsider things, reflect, reevaluate, and discover what he should have known a long, long time ago. I've helped this brother to understand that nothing remains exciting forever. That the novelty wears off for every event. The novelty wears off after a while. It isn't how you start professing love. It isn't how you show commitment in the early days that anybody would remember is what happens when the novelty wears off. It is how you respond to the changes that will determine your personality and your character, really. Judgments will be made about your longevity, not how you start. And I wanted to put that on camera this morning. I wanted to document that. I wanted to gift other people beyond this participant. Sister Mimi, good morning. I wanted this, at, at this conversation I had with this brother of mine to extend beyond that phone call. And I wanted to operate in social media so more people can access. Do you understand that life has phases? Everything that is new no longer is new after a while. Everything that is fresh becomes stale after a while. Everything that becomes stale needs effort to rejuvenate. Please understand. When bread is baked at first, it's lovely and fresh and it's soft and it's wonderful. When bread has been around for a while, it is better that you toast it. You put your bread, which might have been stale, in your toaster and you switch on your toaster. That extra effort gives it new life. And the bread, which would have been uh, stale, becomes fresh toast. And fresh toast is something new, something else. A mature version of what the bread used to be. I like toast. I like toast a lot. And even after a while, if it's not possible to toast it and the bread has become so dry, you can turn it into breadcrumbs. I sign good morning, you can make it into breadcrumbs. And your breadcrumbs can coat your best chicken. It can coat your, be it coats your best fish. It can be converted to so many different things, but it requires effort. 
you don't throw out the bread because it's no longer a day old. Bread, regardless of the age, can be used for so many exciting different things. The difference between he who throws bread and he who doesn't is knowledge and understanding. He who knows that you can toast will never throw out good bread. He who knows how to make breadcrumbs will never throw out even still bread. He who understands how to recycle and to upcycle and to convert the old and turn it into new, to tie a scarf around something old, to bring excitement to it, to rejuvenate something which might have been on a downturn, that is a specific skill. Those who find the skill, those who have this knowledge are the ones who have longevity and are the ones who will be standing at the end after a period of time do you know how to stand oh mark thank you thank you good morning chester good morning good morning i am hoping to make you think deeply what i'm actually saying sounds superficial but it's not it is very profound and it affects so many avenues of life it's a mental capacity we either have or you don't have but you can develop the way you see things, the way you perceive things, the way you understand things determines whether you start things, you abandon things, and you move. In my career, I think there's only been one or two episodes when I've stayed in a job for a year. I am the girl who stays for 10, and I fix, and I change, and I leave a legacy before I go. I am the one who understands that the man I married is maturing just as I am maturing. He has a lot of gray hair and I have come to discover that gray hair is very romantic, very sexy. Since I made that discovery, I do not see an aging man. I see a mature man. I see an exciting man. I look at my own grace and I realize, you know what? This kid is now more experienced. This kid is maturing. And just as this kid is maturing, should she be matched by a mature person? The men and women who don't understand this, but particularly the men who don't understand this, are the ones who abandon their wives and they go looking for their daughters. <laughs> they try to date their daughters and you realize you don't have the energy to do so. Suddenly you become the old person in the company, <laughs> the one everybody giggles about. The one who looks a fool because you are not operating in your circles. It's because you never understood the basic thing. You didn't know how to upscale and to how, how to upcycle how to rejuvenate, how to rekindle. You did not know that. If only somebody had gifted you that knowledge. If only somebody had created that awareness. If only somebody had taught you how to do that. You will not be in a nightclub with teenagers in your 40s, trying to fit in, trying to take tablets so you have more energy than you really are capable of trying to do things that you are incapable of and looking stupid in the process and hurting your health most of the time. Do you know how to upcycle? Do you understand longevity? Do you know how to create new things out of the old? Do you know how to remodel? Do you understand how to keep looking at your ultimate aim in order to work through the interim lack of excitement. My ultimate aim remains to sort out my cholesterol level. The bonus is to discover my neck. And now that I've discovered my neck and I've discovered how to put on a belt, I would like to see this also disappear. I would like to see a lot of things tightening and moving. And for that reason, this morning, in spite of how attractive a warm meal is to me, in spite of how attractive warm rice will be to me right now, in spite of how much better warm fish would taste to me right now, having that understanding, having that clarity means that this morning I still continue with this commitment. And as I continue with this commitment, I'm actually reminding myself to look for the tastes. I can taste the ginger and my brain suddenly realizes I will not taste ginger in the fish in the canteen. 
I can taste, I can taste the turmeric. I cannot taste the turmeric in the food in the canteen. But this brain knows that I do need turmeric, that I do need ginger. There's chia seeds in here, and I'm looking at the nutrition out of this pot in comparison to what I would get amid the junk from the dining room. And having sat down and done that simple evaluation, I have come to the decision. What I have here is the very best of all the things that I could eat and drink right now. Why will I let this go and go buy a cheap substitute? Why will I replace this with a cheap substitute? I am able to see the cheapness of the substitute because I've taken time to remind myself of the value that I have in here, of the value of what I have, of the value of what is no longer exciting, but the value hasn't changed. The value remains. It was what it was. It still is what it was. Nothing has changed except that I've become familiar. I've started taking for granted. That's the only difference. This pot is as good as the first one I made. Maybe even better because now I can make them better. The only thing which is different is my perception of the excitement. And if the excitement is not there, I'm like, Ugh, might not taste nice. Yeah. And then you remind yourself it's not about taste only sometimes. It's not always about taste. Sometimes it's about what you need, where it takes you, how it affects your body. Hello sis, good morning. So I'm asking you this morning, have you lost the novelty on something? Were you looking to change it because it's no longer exciting? <laughs> That's a childish response, very childish response. The adult response is to know that everything which is new will eventually wear off. The novelty will wear off. Everything that is familiar is not exciting. Not as exciting as before, but familiarity is good. Knowing exactly what you're getting is good. Not unnecessary surprises. Sometimes you don't need them. Sometimes you just don't need unnecessary surprises. Yawadu, good morning and you're welcome. Charles, good morning. Good morning. I'm talking about when the novelty work wears off. When you have a good thing and you know it's a good thing. But you take the good thing for granted after a while. And you begin to act a little bit irresponsibly. A little bit inconsiderately because you've not actually taken time to remind yourself of the goodness of what you have. Sometimes you need to look at what you have. You have to remind yourself of how valuable it is and the vacuum you will have when that thing no longer exists in your life. When you have that simple exercise, it will help you to cleave. It will help you to hang on to, dear, to good things for dear life. It will teach you that the excitement is not always what you seek. Not all that glitters is gold. Rock solid gold after a while does not luster it is still as golden it is still as valuable it's just been in place for a while might not be shining would have lost some luster but does not change its value remember that the luster changes the excitement changes the novelty changes but the value does not change the value remains and it's up to you to see value over luster. Do you have that maturity? Can you spot luster? Can you distinguish it from value? Value over luster anytime. Value is rock solid, does not change. Luster is fickle and it changes. And so many good people have been caught by the fickle of luster. They follow the luster. And when the luster is no longer there, they make the mistake to think the value has changed. The value remains. The luster changes. It's up to you to discover the difference between the two. My name remains Aman. I am your coach. I am your motivator. I am your educator. And sometimes I am your thought provoker. Today, I am your thought provoker. I want to provoke you to think. I want you to, I want to provoke you to reconsider decisions. 
Good morning, Papa Thomas. I want to provoke you to be mature. I am asking this morning, can you tell the difference between luster and value? Because of Thomas, I will repeat that little section. I'm explaining gold. When you first buy gold, it's bright, it's shiny. That property of metals is called luster. It's shiny, it looks valuable, it's new, it's exciting, it's attractive. But once you've worn it for as long as my ring has been here, that luster has changed. It is not shiny. The freshness of it is gone, but the value remains. All it takes is somebody who would take a cloth and polish it off. Just a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of attention is able to restore what is my old ring to become something new and fresh. And even if it's not been shown, even if it's not been polished, the value of my ring, as golden as it was when it was first bought for me, is exactly the same value it has. Mr. D, good morning. We really need to talk this weekend. Please, let's talk. Has the value of the gold changed? Not at all. The only quality which has changed is the luster. A person who is mature and understand gold will still look at my old rings and realize it is still gold and the value is the same. The immature person who seeks to value things using luster would throw it and call it old, would throw it and call it valueless, but it's just as valuable. It is just as worthy as it was from the very first day it was made. The perception is the problem. The maturity is the problem. Are you mature? Can you tell the difference between value and luster? Do you understand, Sister Viv, good morning, that everything that is new and shiny eventually loses that appeal, eventually becomes ordinary. But ordinary value is still just as valuable. Think my gold again. It's gold, rock solid gold. Can still be sold with a little bit of elbow grease. Can be polished to make look very attractive. Can be made very shiny by somebody who understands that all that it's lost is luster. All it has lost is luster. It has not lost any value. It remains just as valuable. A man who knows this, a woman who knows this, will maintain this and have it polished. One who doesn't know this will throw it and say that it's not valuable. Hi, girls. I don't have any. No. Sorry, darling. Do you throw it or do you know how to polish? Do you understand? What I'm saying is actually profound. I know it's very, very profound. What I'm saying requires a little bit of careful consideration to understand, but it's applicable to many avenues of life. You start a new business, very exciting. And then you become broke, not exciting. The novelty wears off. And then you claim it's not a worthy business. It's not a viable business venture. It is a very viable business venture. It has lost a bit of luster. It is up to you to upcycle, to recycle, to remodel, to change, reinvent, re-excite. Can you do that? Do you understand this? Your wife is old, yeah? Just as beautiful in age. Rose, good morning. Good morning, Rukaya. Just as gorgeous as she's always been. Aging much better than everybody else her age. All other men see how attractive and how special your wife still is. The only person who doesn't see it is you. You've been confused between luster and value. Luster and value. The husband you married is no longer looking attractive because he's got a pot belly. Still say, man, sister, look in the mirror. You will discover you are also pot bellied too. What's happening to this good man? Happens to all good men and happens to women too, good and bad. You learn to look for the value and not the luster. The belly is the luster. The personality, the love, the commitment. 
those are the values of a man not just his outward appearance not just his outward appearance those are the values of a woman not her outward appearance only the people who understand this they stay because they know value of a luster the people who are mis who have misunderstood this they abandon value in pursuit of luster and the funny thing is not all that glitters is gold people like that they end up with fool's gold I'm not calling them any names but I'm telling you the gold they get is fool's gold glitters very brightly but not real gold has no substance has no value can you tell the difference between luster and value luster and substance do you know the differences between them can you distinguish between what is worthy and what's not do you abandon tarnished value in pursuit of fool's gold or have you matured to know the difference between value and luster my whole pass don't have one don't have one Ask anybody down the corridor, I'm sure they'll give you. Thank you. It's all right. Anyway, as you can tell, it's lunchtime for me, duty calls. But I wanted to have this conversation because I've had a conversation with a brother. I uh, pointed a few things out to this brother and I realized it might be worth putting on record because some other brothers and sisters might have needed to hear this. Some people who know it already may have forgotten themselves and will need a reminder including me it's a reminder for me it's a reminder for you but if you don't remember anything from me this morning i'm asking you do you know the difference between luster and substance can you identify tarnished value which requires a little bit of polishing to restore luster do you understand can you work it out or will you throw out valuable pieces because they are no longer shining? Let me love you. Let me leave you. Let me pause here for you to ponder. And we will meet again later on today to discuss a few other topics. Oh, Frank and Paulina, good morning, good morning, good morning. You've ended, you, well, you've come in just when I was signing out. But for your sake, I will simply summarize. I was explaining. I was using gold and a few examples to explain to people why you need to know value. If you know the value of gold and gold is tarnished the way mine is tarnished, I've been wearing this a decade and half. It's old. There's nothing fresh about it. And because this is old, it doesn't look exciting. It doesn't look flashy. It's not shiny. And if you don't understand the difference between metals, you would think it's cheap. You would think it's worthless. You would throw it out because it's old. But the value in there is still what it was from the day I bought it. All that is required is that somebody knows that a little bit of elbow grease and polishing off this ring can make it look as good as new. So you can restore my rubbish ring and make it look as if it was, bought, it was bought yesterday. That's all I discussed today. And I'm hoping to push you to think and ponder and reflect on all avenues of your life with this knowledge in mind. Have you thrown out good value before? in pursuit of luster might you be tempted to do it again and the difference between those who do that and those who don't is knowledge understanding experience and wisdom let me leave you here we'll be back in touch with each other soon have a fabulous day and speak soon